Can Chinese maker Oppo's latest smartphone compete with the likes of what many have considered the best smartphone of 2014 so far? I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is the Oppo Find 7A versus the HTC One M8. The core philosophies behind both the One M8 from HTC and Oppo Find 7A actually aren't all that different, if you don't consider the fact that the 7A isn't actually Oppo's absolute best smartphone. The Find 7 is, but in actuality the Find 7A is more in line with the One M8 anyway, so this comparison actually makes a lot of sense. Both HTC and Oppo have set out to make absolutely stellar smartphones. From a design perspective, fully fledged feature set, specifications, and an overall performance, we'd say they both did really well, even if the outcomes were totally different. Let's take a moment to recognize that in the form of an in-depth comparison. From the outside, these two smartphones really couldn't look less alike. The One M8 is a precision machined work of art. The brushed aluminum makes it look more like a kitchen appliance than a run-of-the-mill smartphone, but it really works well for the phone. It's rounded, smooth, and just glides into the palm of your hand. We figure the rounded back is about all the One M8 has in common with the Find 7A, at least visually, even if the curve of the 7A is more subtle. Its edges are more harsh, it's much more boxy and stark, and we really like that too. But the Find 7A is made mostly of plastic, whereas the One M8 is 90% aluminum. The Find 7A has capacitive navigation buttons, while the One M8 has on-screen buttons, and the Find 7A has a removable backplate and battery, the One M8 does not. Those are just a few of the design differences, but certainly some of the most notable. Physical size is also different, though less than you might think, considering the Find 7A's display is half an inch larger diagonally. The One M8 is just 6.2mm shorter than the Find 7A, 4.4mm narrower, and 0.2mm thinner. And the difference in weight is just 10 grams. Both have a certain heft that we're quite fond of, both feel incredibly well built, and one is not significantly easier to use one-handed than the other. And the deeper you go as far as hardware, the more alike these two phones become. Both feature the Snapdragon 801 SoC with a quad-core Crate 400 CPU clocked at 2.3GHz and an Adreno 330 GPU. Both have 2GB of RAM, both come in 16GB models with microSD card support for up to 128 additional gigabytes, though the M8 also comes in a 32GB model, and both come with 5MP front-facing cameras. The difference in ratings on batteries is just 200mAh, but the biggest differences are the cameras. The One M8 has a 4.1MP camera juxtaposed to a 2MP sensor for just measuring relative depth, and the Find 7A has a 13MP shooter capable of taking 50 megapixel images. Also, the M8 has Wi-Fi AC support as well as an infrared blaster while the Find 7A does not. The displays aren't entirely different though, despite the differences in size and type. The Find 7A comes with a 5.5 inch IPS LCD with a resolution of 1080p. The One M8 has a 5 inch SLCD3 display, also at 1080p. So the One M8's display is obviously a higher density panel, 441 pixels per inch to 401, which isn't exactly discernible. Both panels are incredibly vibrant with wide viewing angles and great contrast. However, the blacks are noticeably more inky on the One M8's display, and it certainly appears brighter. Either way, both phones are incredibly solid. The One M8 admittedly feels nicer in the hand, but the Find 7A has some perks of its own like the incredibly awesome notification LED that speaks straight to our inner nerd, and the casing which may ultimately prove to be more resilient over time. In terms of software, these two are quite different. The One M8 comes with a much needed, lighter version of Sense, version 6.0 atop Android 4.4.2 KitKat. Comparatively, it comes with little bloat, either from the respective carriers or partners, or even HTC, and the phone itself comes with a very near-stock Android feel, even if there are minor tweaks to the UI here and there. HTC has stopped focusing on creating visually different software for the sake of being different, and started focusing on what truly matters, user experience. Things like Blinkfeed, Boomsound, and Zoe add value to the software without making it overbearing or overencumbered. We wish we had such nice things to say about the software on the Oppo Find 7a, which comes running Android 4.3 Jellybean beneath what Oppo calls Color OS. If you've ever used MyUI, you'll likely feel right at home as there are a ton of visual similarities. Frankly, it feels as if no avenue was left untouched. Every virtual inch of the software has been customized and can be even further customized by the user. From the gesture panel, accessed by pulling down from the top of the display, to the powerful theme engine. It comes with a bevy of pre-installed applications for better or worse, and diverts heavily from the core Android experience. 
Some things we do like, however, like how the notification shade layout handles landscape orientation, but there's so much going on that gestures and other inputs often conflict, damaging the user experience. One win for both phones, though, are all the gesture controls. Double tap on the 1M8's display and portrait orientation to turn the display on. Double tap the home button on the Find 7A in any orientation to turn on its display. Draw a circle on the Find 7A's display and standby to launch yourself into the camera app, or pick the M8 up in landscape and hold the volume button to do the same. These are the sort of hidden features we'd love to discover, and both of these phones come packed to the brim with them. That said, the 1M8 takes the software battle in a landslide victory, due to the overall better, more simple user experience, running the current version of Android, and not bloating the phone with dozens of applications users may never use or need. Performance is actually a strong suit for both of these smartphones, which should come as no surprise thanks to the Snapdragon 801 chips inside. Both come with the same 2.3 GHz clock speeds, and any differences in the speed at which they open, close, and switch apps are negligible. One might be faster one time, and the other might be the next. It's back and forth, and both are more than capable of running all the best games on Android without a hitch. Both have the tendency to heat up quickly, though we'd say the 1M8's heat dispersion is definitely more noticeable thanks to the all-metal build. And we've actually noticed some lag on the Find 7A, whereas the 1M8 has offered an overall smoother experience. We'd like to talk battery life and network performance, but we've been having issues with our Find 7A unit, both with AT&T and T-Mobile SIMs here in the States. We're currently working to resolve the issue, but we decided to compare these phones anyway. By the numbers, however, the Find 7A has roughly an 11.76 watt-hour battery to the 1M8's 9.2 watt-hour battery. We can't speak to its drain since we don't really know what's going on with the network, but the Find 7A comes with rapid charge technology and a power brick that delivers 4.5 amps. Simply put, this phone charges fast. Very fast. Both phones come with very loud speakers. The Find 7A's dual rear speakers actually surprised us, but they're hardly a match for the 1M8's dual front-facing boom sound speakers, which offer better low-end, better stereo separation, and provide more volume. And finally, the cameras. At 13 megapixels, the rear camera on the Find 7A is clearly capable of taking pictures with more detail, but we felt the colors and images taken with the 1M8 were more true to life. However, you can only crop so much with the 1M8's camera at 4 megapixels, and we've covered before how the Duo Camera's U-Focus feature only works as intended a fraction of the time. Yesterday, we covered the standout feature of the Find 7A's camera, taking 50 megapixel images with a 13 megapixel camera. It sounds crazy, but it actually works better than you'd think. Still, neither camera is particularly mind-blowing. They're both pretty awful at low-light shots, the Find 7A is prone to blurry pictures, and the 1M8 just doesn't have the resolution to support the 4K age we're transitioning into. Both do, however, have 5 megapixel front-facing cameras for high-res selfies. They don't exactly take amazing pictures, but they're notably better than their 2 megapixel counterparts. So where does all this leave us? Well, with two very high-end smartphones from two companies striving to make the very best smartphones possible. And if you're after quality, you likely won't go wrong with either option, though we feel the 1M8 is definitely geared more towards the multimedia user. You can't beat those boom sound speakers and its build quality and design are definitely more noteworthy. Still, the Find 7A's camera software, the gorgeous LED notification light, rapid charging, and the raw power of the Snapdragon 801 still make it a viable option. The better overall experience comes from the One M8, no question, as the software on the Find 7A is questionable, but truthfully, both handsets are absolutely killer. Folks, that is going to do it for this comparison. If you enjoyed it, be sure to click the thumbs up button below. And of course, stay tuned for more Oppo Find 7A coverage over the next week, including a full review, written, and video here on the YouTube channel. Be sure to follow us in all the usual places, Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus at PocketNow. I'm Taylor Martin. You can find me on Twitter at CasperTech, and I will see you next time.